Hi everyone, welcome to Practice Problem Inventory 03. This one is all about recording inventory sales in a perpetual inventory system. So here we go. You've got three pieces of economic activity all revolving around selling merchandise. Take a moment, pause the video, see if you can journalize these three pieces of activity. When you're ready, come back and I'll walk through the solution. All right, welcome back. So let's get started with A. On July 2nd, Tiger Inc. sells $5,000 worth of inventory to customers for $7,500, and it gives us some terms. All right, so first of all, let's focus on those terms. Anytime you see payment terms, what it suggests is that the customer has not paid yet, because these payment terms include a discount if they pay within a certain window or if they don't pay within the discount window when their net balance is due. That occurs when a customer charges something to account and agrees essentially to pay later. You're trying to incentivize them to pay quickly. So on 7-2, because we see terms, we know that the customer is charging this to an account. And specifically, we have charged the customers $7,500. So we are going to debit accounts receivable for $7,500, that's what the customers owe us, and we are going to credit sales revenue, Oop, misspelled that, sales revenue for $7,500. We have earned revenue equal to what we charge the customer for the product. Now, of course, that's not all that's involved in this entry because revenue is only half the story. We did sell a product to the customer, and that product cost us some money. Specifically, it cost us $5,000. And so not only do we get to record the revenue that we've earned that the customer now owes us, but we also have to record that merchandise leaving our possession and the cost associated with it. We refer to that as cost of goods sold, and that's our second debit for $5,000. And that is paired up with a reduction in our inventory worth $5,000. Notice the combination of recording revenue of what we charge the customer and cost of goods sold for what we originally paid for the inventory, that combination creates the profit of the company, in this case, a $2,500 markup. All right, that's A. Now let's check B. Whoop. B says, on July 12th, Tiger Inc. offers its customers a 10% credit due to a defect in the inventory sold. Notice it doesn't say anything about the customers returning any inventory. It's simply a, hey, we need to make good because that inventory was defective. That's something we call an allowance, where we give the customer a discount because something was wrong, but we're enticing them not to return the inventory. Rather, we, we'd rather them keep the defective inventory. We'll just, we'll give them a break on the cost. All right, so 10% credit. That 10% comes off of the selling price. In this case, 10% of 7,500 is going to be, be $750. So we're gonna give them a $750 discount. Now, what is that that we're discounting? Well, we're discounting what they owe us. So instead of owing us $7,500, we are now going to mark down that receivable by our 10%, by our 750, okay? The problem is, what's the debit that goes with this? Now, logically, we could look at this right here, AR and sales revenue, and we could say, well, if we're reducing the AR, shouldn't we also reduce the sales revenue? And conceptually speaking, that's absolutely right. We do need to reduce the sales revenue. However, we do not do that by recording a debit to sales revenue. In fact, you'll rarely ever see a debit to sales revenue. Instead, what we have is a contra revenue called sales returns and allowances. It doesn't matter whether it was a return or whether it was an allowance. If you give the customer a discount for what is otherwise a problem with the inventory, you are going to debit this account, sales returns and allowances. That is going to be a contra revenue that then lowers sales revenue on the income statement. So that's B. C says, on July 14th, Tire Inc.'s customers pay their remaining balances in full. 
So we started off with $7,500 in our AR. $7,500. We reduced it for them by $750. That means that their current balance is $6,750. And they're going to pay that off. So AR is going to go down by $6,750 as a result of this transaction. They're paying off the balance. Now, absent any sort of discount arrangement, the other side of this would be we receive cash of $6,750. But that's not what's going to happen here. We are still going to get cash. That's not changing. The thing is, we offered these customers a discount, specifically a discount of 1% if they paid within 15 days. That was on July 2nd. It's now July 14th. It is within 15 days, which means this remaining balance that they owe us they're going to get a 1% discount on that. So, $67.50 times 1% is $67.50. Sorry, it's not a nice round number. They're going to get that as a discount, which means they don't have to pay that. So, when we talk about the cash we're going to receive, $67.50 minus $67.50 means that the total cash received is actually only going to be 6682 50. Now our journal entry is out of balance though. What about the balance? What about that 6750 that we didn't debit to cash? What do we debit it to? Well, in this case, once again, just like we lowered our sales revenue using a contra account, we're lowering our sales revenue again because we gave them a discount. Only this was an official discount as part of payment plans. This wasn't an allowance or a return. This is just a regular old discount, and the contra account for that is called sales discount. Again, another contra revenue. These are essentially doing the same thing when it comes to the income statement. They show up in the revenue section, but as subtractions from the sales revenue you would have otherwise earned, telling investors, hey, we charged customers $7,500, but we had to give them a little something back because of a problem, and we gave them a little something back due to a discount arrangement with them. All right, that's it for journalizing inventory sales in a perpetual inventory system. Hope you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.